in the core ministry campus life in the Sacramento area. So it's nice to be sharing with all of you. It's nice to be here today. And what I'd like to talk to you about and what I'd like to convince you today is um, about the idea of success with on-campus ministry. And I know at this time, it's really easy to just start, you know, sitting in your chair. I was, really, I was really comfortable. These are really comfortable chairs. Sit back and do all that. But what I'd really love to do just during, during our time together is ask you to reconsider changing your intentionality and your strategy with being on school campuses. I've had the pleasure of talking to you, uh, some of you here who are already on school campuses and you're connected and that's wonderful, that's awesome. But I'd still like to ask you to be more intentional. I'd like to ask you to be more strategic. Some of you thinking to yourself, uh, if I go on school campus, I'd be that creepy person that's walking on that nobody knows and I'd like to ask you to reconsider your intentionality and reconsider your strategy. Because that's who I am. I am that creepy guy that goes on campus every week. <laughs> I'm the one that walks into admin buildings and the secretary that's supposed to keep you out is uh, staring at you and saying, and what are you doing here again? And you're like, I know some of the students. I just want to visit them for lunch. You know, I'm somebody from the community. I want to visit and they're like, I don't think that we can do that. Do adults visit kids on school campus? That's weird. So yes, that's me. I'm the one who walks around and like only five of my youth group kids go to one particular school. So I'm walking, I only know five kids out of 2,000. That's not very good odds of meeting people. Very good odds of meeting new people though. But anyways, walking around and doing that. A little bit, uh, just that way you know my uh, story and where I'm coming from, I was an intern with Campus Life in college, but then uh, for a while was a youth pastor and actually, once again, am, am back working with Campus Life and so I'm very, I'm very blessed to be working in the context that I feel God has called me to. But I wanted to say that because I just wanted to let you know I'm not just talking from somebody from a parachurch that's saying I want you to reconsider going on school campuses. I'm telling you, as somebody who was a youth pastor, a high school youth pastor, um, I chose two schools that were our primary schools where kids were coming from, and I went from, I mean, what I'd like to say is just zero to two years of really embarrassing uh, just time walking around campus feeling like I have no idea why I'm there, and then over time, letting God use my presence, letting God use that Holy Spirit working through me, working alongside of students, hanging out with students in my youth group and meeting their friends um, that sort of transformed me on two separate campuses. So I've had the pleasure of going on campus as campus life, going on campus as a youth pastor. And so please understand that I'm not urging you from a context that would be completely, completely different. So the question that I really want you to ask is, why on campus work? Why would you even consider on campus work? What's the point? What's the gain from it? What is, is the, you know, what would be the end goal of it? And so, of course, you know, because this is a genius logical progression, I'm going to start with why not? Because I talk to a lot of youth pastors and they're scared. They're scared. Uh, youth workers are scared. They're scared to go on campus because going on campus is a little bit like a zombie apocalypse. Excuse the reference, I'm into The Walking Dead right now, so forgive me. But you know, you walk on and you've got all these blank stares at you like, uh, what are you doing here? You're like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm sorry to uh, infringe on your space, to infringe on your community, but here, here nonetheless. And so why not? Because uh, p kids don't know you because you're afraid that Maybe you might embarrass some of the kids in your youth group. Why not go on school campuses? Why not be there? Kids are there for the majority of their week. I mean, think about how much time they're spending on school campuses. It's so important for us to be there and to do that. So I'd like to just focus on two primary reasons of why on-campus work and why to consider being on campuses. Oh, that's interesting. Excellent. Okay, first of all, don't, don't you love that? Hey, technology. This uh, seminar is about not using technology. Okay, so um, first of all, why on campus work? Because you need the schools. To be honest, you need the schools. If you're in youth work and you're not considering on campus and schools as one of your primary tools to connect with students, 
you, I think, I think you're missing it. And if you feel like I'm calling you out, I'm going to call you out. I'm bringing it home right here. We're going fire and brimstone right here at the, you know, the, the end of this. I think that you are missing something that is so big and it is so pressing and so important for you to be there. First of all, as already mentioned, it's where students are every week. It's where students spend hours and hours. I mean, why wouldn't you just go there? You have access. You do have access to them, and I recognize not all of us are invited on school campuses, but figure it out. Figure out your intentionality. Figure out your strategy and get there. Come alongside of them. This is where students create their own culture, patterns, habits. This is where they're receiving affirmation and confirmation from their peers as to what does a normal teenager look like? How does a normal teenager dress? How does a normal teenager act? How does a teenager interact with adults? How does, an inter how does a teenager do this? They are working these things out with their peers on school campuses. And I think that the church and I think that Christian mentors are not, take, not seeing the seriousness of this culture, not seeing the seriousness of kids together. We had this crazy idea. It was a crazy idea a couple weeks ago. Um, we don't do anything without the church because that's the ultimate end goal. Yes, absolutely, we love doing stuff as campus life, but you know what? We're not the church. You know who we are? We are the people that are getting on campus, find crazy creative ways to reach out to the least and the lost and to get them connected to your youth groups. And so the crazy idea was, hey, local church, would you cook for us pancakes and we're just going to show up one day? And the church said to us, well, because you haven't been advertising, are you sure? And so, you know, three weeks prior, I'm telling them every week, because I, you know, I volunteer as a small group leader at their youth group, yeah, we're coming, yeah, or we're gonna do this, can you please cook pancakes? You know, this is going to happen. Oh, but you haven't advertised, and uh, you know, I, I just, we, we don't think that's gonna work out, so maybe we should wait another week. I got a call at 11 o'clock from the youth pastor saying to me, are you sure this pancake breakfast is gonna happen because nobody knows about it? They show up the next morning, they do it. No kids knew that we were doing a pancake breakfast. We served 150 students. 150 contacts, 150 people. Now, believe me, if you were to have a personal conversation with me, I would not talk to you about numbers and I would not talk to you about how important numbers are. I'd talk to you about influence and about relationship. But what I would say at the end of the day is we need people to have influence and to have relationship with and 120 new students to be in contact with, 120 new students to be walking around school campus and to be able to say hello to and to ask kids how are those pancakes and various things and hey, guess what, we're doing it again and guess what, next time they're free and there'll be sausage, you know, that kind of a crazy thing we wanna do. So you need, you need the schools. And one of the biggest reasons why you need the schools, and schools wouldn't like me to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyways, is that this is the place where students are living out their faith. Yeah, they're living out their faith at home with their parents and their brothers and sisters. Yeah, they're living out their faith if they're getting jobs on the road, not doing road rage, you know, all that kind of stuff. They're living out their faith in all these contexts. But I would say that there are very few other places in their life where there is such a mass of their peers, such strong peer pressure to give in to other faiths, to give in to other ideolo ideologies, that's the word, to live their life in a certain world perspective. You need the schools. And if you haven't thought about that as youth work, if you as a church, maybe uh, as a strategy, as an overall strategy, you're not even thinking about it, I'm telling you right now, Get a ministry team together. Get a ministry team together and just love on a school. Love a school inside of its context, inside of where it's at. Come alongside and get connected with students because there's tons of students there. We have mega churches. I'm from the Sacramento area. We have mega churches, which I think are awesome. And I'm sitting down at coffee and youth workers are telling me about how they're overwhelmed because they've got 300 kids in their youth group. Wow, 300 kids. I know. I didn't. I was never that close. I can't imagine those problems. But... They're telling me about 300 kids, and I said, that's great. But the school half a mile from you has 2,000 kids, and the school five miles from you has 2,000 more. You're getting some from this school, some from this school, and if I were to go to this direction, there's 2,000 more. I mean, are we doing the math here where, yeah, I understand we're reaching a lot, but if we were to look at the real numbers and the real dollars and cents, there is an urgency to get on campus, and there's an urgency to connect with students who are living out life with other people, and the question is, who's helping them? Who's coming alongside of them? So you need the schools. The schools are naturally bringing 
all this together. Secondly, excellent, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go down into the bottom, perfect. Uh, schools need you. And I'm just gonna say right now, the schools don't know that they need you. In fact, they'll tell you that they, that they don't need you. They'll tell you that they don't want you. And they'll tell you that it would probably be better if you don't come back. No, I'm just kidding. But they'll, they'll say, you know, we don't, we don't need you here. We've got you covered. In fact, we've had a couple school campuses that have told us that because of uh, the events at Sandy Hook, we're not allowing guests on campus anymore. We're not allowing guests. What, what are these kids doing at school? I understand that they're doing academics, but if there's no other adults coming on campus, no extracurricular activities, no character forming, no morality forming adults coming on campus to invest in these students, I mean, that's crazy. In my head, I, I, can't, I can't imagine what this would be like to do that. I got a haunting phone call. It's still the worst phone call I've ever gotten in ministry uh, to this day. And basically, a school called, called us and said, a kid has committed suicide. And the, the whole uh, community, the whole school was devastated. And they decided to call us, which to me, I'm like, what do you, what do you think we do? I, you know, I, I don't know what we can do. We can, we can pray if you want to let us on campus, but you know, we want to respect those boundaries. And they said, come pray with our students. Come counsel our students. Unlimited access, because we don't know who else to call. We don't know who else to go to. The most haunting part of that phone call for me was they said the family has asked us as the school to take down the rope because he was going to hang himself in his closet. And we don't know what to do because our teachers don't take down ropes. Our administrators and secretaries don't take down ropes. What do we do? And they said, would you guys do it? Because of our connection with them, the schools who didn't know that they needed us and probably to that point didn't care if they needed us, at that point they realized what we were there for and they realized what we could help with and how we could help the community. And so the three, um, the three things that I wrote is that schools need you to support the overall academic environment. It's great that there's adults there and their teachers and those teachers are connecting with students, but how much more helpful would it be to have more adults on school campuses coming alongside of students and saying, hey, what did you think about that science assignment? What did you think about that history lesson? What did you think about this? To be able to come alongside students and support their academics, to support them as they're forming their future and figuring out themselves and making decisions for that. Um, as I already mentioned in that story, to help in times of crisis. Crises are going to come. We know that. We just know that as a truth of life. We know that as a truth from the Bible. We know that as a truth. And are we just going to leave our schools unsupported? I don't often hear of schools that seek out a church to help them in a time of crisis. It may happen, but I don't often hear them say, hey, let me go into the yellow pages and find somebody that can help us right now. They'll go to counselors, they'll go to people that the school administration tells them to, but if we're not putting ourselves intentionally in those places, then at the end of the day, they're not gonna to come to us in times of a crisis. And then lastly, to be an adult who cares about students' stories, who brings the students' stories to the administration. We've had so many kids that have dealt with running away, fighting with their parents, doing all these things, making terrible decisions at school, and we've had the privilege of being able to talk to the administration and say, I actually know this kid, Vance, and he's a good kid. He's just having a lot of hard time at home. We're meeting with him one-on-one, -on -one. we're doing our best. And it gives uh, the school an opportunity to see another perspective of a kid rather than just seeing them academically as pass-fail, rather than just seeing them as an empty seat or a filled seat, whether it's on time or late. So, going through a lot of stuff, but I wanna get to the, the big thing that I, that I wanted to put at. And I've lost it. Huh? Yes, I do. Best recommendation right here is Point Break. That's my best recommendation. I'm going to shamelessly plug something that Youth for Christ does. If you don't want to do something just in spite of me, do Challenge Day. I don't care either way, but just so you know, your school needs this. This is a Point Break, Challenge Day, anything. These are pre-intervention programs where you spend the entire day with students. You do things like, if you really knew me, going around in a circle, everybody gets a chance to share, no one interrupts. You get to do cross the line. Let me tell you about Dallas. Uh, three weeks ago, I was in a small group in Point Break with this girl named Dallas. Cute girl, cute blonde. I mean, you look at her and you think that she's you know, composed and everything's going great. 
She was one of those people that when she cries, like, her face doesn't get ugly, the tear just kind of falls out, and she just wipes it away. You're like, wow, I don't know, I don't know how you did that. <laughs> so she said, if you really knew me, you know that my mom, my, I don't know my dad, and my mom abandoned us when, I was five, when we were five years old, my older sister, my younger brother, that, that my mom abandoned us when we were five years old to be a stripper. If you really knew me, you know that a year ago she came back into our lives and decided to be our mother again, and now she just has boyfriend coming in and out of the house constantly. That was in a context I had never met Dallas before. Never met Dallas before. I didn't know her, I didn't have any way to know her. But in that day, I got to know her story at the most intimate levels. And when I go back on school campuses weekly, I get an opportunity to see her more and more. And so what I want to urge you to do is reconsider. Reconsider your intentionality. Reconsider your strategy. If you want to call it youth ministry and on-campus ministry, you can. If you want to put youth ministry and on-campus ministry together, you can. But I just want to tell you right now, on-campus ministry is a place to meet kids where they're at in their story and where they're spending weeks with peers, forming their life and living faith together. So if you're ever interested in talking about this, talking any further, and if you're ever interested in Point Break and getting on board, just let me know because I'm right here and I'm ready to talk about that stuff and I'm ready to be passionate about school campuses. Thank you so much. Thank you.